Hey, sorry friends. Today we are checking out a new house that has impressed me a lot and that is Astie de Villat. Now I will preface it by saying this is not a house I discovered this last weekend and I am speaking it up today. I have known this brand for more than 5 years and they perfumed for more than 3. I also own 4 10ml bottles and 100ml. Worn them several times. So I have gone to know them rather well for quite a long period. Now just to give some background here, obviously there is particularly no need for me to seek out new houses and buy perfumes that are merely competent. Having said that, I have for the most part acquired the fragrances that I need from the houses that I like, be it designer or niche. I could just be content with them, but there is always this search for novelty and for something exceptional that stands out from the noise in today's oversaturated fragrance market and yes there are not that many impressive designer fragrances these days at least per my taste and on the niche side houses like Serge Luton's, Frederic Moll, Eldo, Goutal, L'Artisan though I have enjoyed some of their newer offerings have not been at their prime for some time they are now induced into the hall of fame so to speak overall prices have gone through the roof we are having more and more new releases and vintage perfume stocks are drying up and being the optimist that I am and my affinity for contemporary perfumery, I still think there are good brands and creations out there. With that in mind, say since the pandemic, three houses have really stood out to me. I have liked some on-off releases, but here I mean a brand as a whole. Those three are Nila Vermeer, Les Indemodables, and the third is maybe not particularly a brand, but it is Roberto Greco. Sure, don't love each and every one of them equally. I have my favorites. I could even mention some shortcomings like Greco's sometimes can go into full-on artistic mode rather than being wearable perfumes. Limited release. Les Indemodables, overemphasis on materials exhibition and some of them come across cold with no emotional resonance. Some misleading perfume genre names early on. The high pricing of all these three brands and so forth. What I'm trying to say is no brand is perfect on the contrary to what marketers, influencers say as excuses to try to convince their audience. Only by holding products to high standards can we get the most value from the goods we buy. Having said all that, these three houses represent the best of the last 5-10 to 10 years of perfumery to me. I hope to talk about them in dedicated videos. Now I am showing a house that joins them, making it the fourth modern day brand I enjoy, and that is Astia de Villat. They are a ceramic manufacturing brand founded in 96. They make collectible items inspired by 18th century Parisian aesthetics, very desired by ceramic arts and crafts collectors. Other than ceramics, they also make home products like candles, incense, soaps, and even publish some books on life in Paris. I discovered some of their initial fragrances. Toussaint and Colognes in 2022, which I thought were well made, showed potential and had my attention. Then at the beginning of 2023, I discovered this trilogy called Three Historical Perfumes or Trois Parfums Historiques, created by Dominique Ropion. They are based on ideas of perfume products used by the Egyptians, the Romans and an 1800s French author. The brief came from the founders of the brand, Yvonne and Benoit, and went to Annick Le Guéret who is a professional historian anthropologist and happened to do research on ancient scents with none other than Dominique Hopion. I liked the idea and ended up buying the set which comes with the book explaining the ideas behind these perfumes. I have been wearing them for the last couple of years and I have to say I have been really impressed. So let's go over them one by one. First one is called Le Dieu Bleu. This is based on the formula of an Egyptian scented incense pulp called Kife that they use for worship, medicine, scent and even consumed. The creators are also transparent enough to say they are doing more of an interpretation of the old recipe if you will and using materials that are compliant with today's standards. It is apparently made of all things ranging from dried flowers like roses, broom, cured fruits such as juniper berries, raisins, wine to ginger, pepper, resins, balsams like myrrh, incense and can go up to 50 ingredients. The recreation seems to honor it. It is a resinous, balsamic, terpenic composition with said myrrh and amber. 
Spicy cardamom and ginger are pretty evident. Accents of dried flowers and fruits are also present. They even mention nard in the original formula, which is predominantly featured in Egyptian culture books. They used patchouli here instead, as nard is restricted. Multiple resinous facets here, although linear. There is a dry resinous heart with the amber, then this molten balsamic resinous side with the myrrh, and this sort of piney lemony facet with the mastic. I am also picking up some sweet component here from Frederick Maul's Music for a While, also made by an IFF perfumer. Not the pineapple, but that sticky, syrupy, fruity undertone is present here. It is indeed a peculiar composition, though it used modern day ingredients and techniques. The smells are of a different time and unapologetically old fashioned. All three are in fact. This smells mysterious, spiritual and almost supernatural. Like a golden solar eclipse is what comes to mind. I'm not sure if it is the power of suggestion, but with the way the balsamic resinous components are used, maybe with some aroma chemicals, creates this pigmented turquoise blue image, which is strange, but also equally intriguing. So that is Le Dieu Bleu. Next is Artabon, which is based on perfumes used by Romans from 2000 years ago. Initially created by the Greeks, the base is fairly similar to Kife, so they share similar notes and scent profiles. Main difference being that in addition to resins, balsams, fruits, spices and flowers, there are herbs like marjoram in big doses here. Of course, based on those formulas of Artabon, which means royal perfume, it appears the Romans loved to perfume everything from their bodies, clothes, vehicles, buildings and even their pets even going to the extent of creating apertures on the ceilings of celebratory venues to discharge perfume onto their guests. Coming to the smell, like I said, it is also resinous, balsamic from the amber, myrrh and opoponax, sweet, syrupy and spicy, big dosage of cardamom, anise and cinnamon in here, medicinal, some licorice-like nuances. Then the herbal facets dominate in the dry down with a prominent marjoram note. I'm also picking up lots of aromatic woody nuances like cypress, pine and thyme here. Just an undercurrent of smokiness and woodiness in the base. Lots of heavy notes and yet it does not smell like it lacks direction like some indie perfumes do. It is very evocative and has a lot of emotional resonance for me. This is to say it is not just an interesting backstory, not only about using the best materials or just innovative techniques but one that triggers an emotional response, makes me think of something, a place, a painting, or a memory, or just an imagination. So there is some sort of connection. It is what I would imagine at least somewhat close to taking a herbal bath in ancient Rome will feel like amongst the high decorated ceilings and vaulted facades. It is grand, bold, and opulent. They really pack a punch, these perfumes. They're not animalic or particularly challenging, but they are an acquired taste. In that way, they are somewhat in the vein of the classic Serge Luton's creations. Last up is Les Nuits, which I have a full bottle of. It was also in my best purchases of 2023 video. It is inspired by a perfume worn by the famed author George Sand during her time at a residence outside of Paris. This is the only one where they claim they were able to actually recover some remnants of the original scent from a vial that was held by a descendant and passed on to Anik. They authenticated it via chromatography and came up with a reconstituted formula. This is a floral cheap, more of a traditional French perfume in comparison to the two others. They feel like aroma potions in perfume form, more blocky and get straight to the point without any foreplay. This one is more soft, seductive, sensual and a teaser. At first glance, I assumed it would be a rose patchouli fragrance based on the notes. Obviously, portrait of a lady came to mind. Then when I wore it, it was more of a voluptuous, powdery, chalky floral in the vein of Une Fleur de Cassis. You get the rose and patchouli, but they are desaturated and dry. I almost feel the colors fading here. Everything is dry, the rose, patchouli, jasmine, ylang. Later dries down to this damp, earthy, mossy, woody scent with the sandalwood and vetiver. What is most prominent here is interestingly the Tuscan iris slash oris, which maintains that vintage makeup, 
chalky, powdery dryness throughout the wearing. Hints of violet and heliotrope are also present. This is one that some might feel is a grandma perfume and I can see that. But it is so beautiful, I adore it. While the other two are luminous, ambery, radiant smells, this one is more somber, some darkness in there. The dry moss and castorium in the base gives that leathery, carnal vibration. In summary, it is a powdery, floral, woody, leathery sheep. George Sand apparently loved roses from her gardens and floral perfumes. Unfortunately, the perfume houses that she used to buy from are no more. Maybe she wore something like this while wandering those gardens during summer nights with her lover Chopin. Another interesting anecdote from Ropion is he thinks this could have been possibly a precursor to the Chypre family, which became much more established in the 20th century and revolutionized perfumery itself. Apart from the three historical perfumes, I also have this one, Delhi, which is a solar floral amber with champaka and orange blossom. This year, there was also Mount La Jolie, which is a fresh green citrus aromatic with mint, basil and fig, all made by Francoise Caron, who also has done multiple ones for the brand apart from Ropion. Some colognes are also nice, particularly Dr. Flash Elixir, centered on sage. But the best ones are these three, especially Artaban and Les Nuits. I think I'll eventually pick up a full bottle of Artaban as well. As for Ropion, I know his alien, dune or important fragrances, but I have always considered his best work is with Frederick Mall. I mean, with the new Desert Gem, they have 10 creations together. That collaboration is something special. Yes, of course, he is not as consistent as someone like Elena. He would do a $2,000 oud and go to Paco Rabanne Phantom. But I understand it is part of the job. In any case, I would say these might be his best work, artistically speaking, outside of Edition Parfum and even seem to let him put his research knowledge into application. As for Astier de Villat, I think they have had a commendable start and I hope they build on this and continue making interesting perfumes. Though I look at fragrances in context as in what they set out to do, be it a 30 euro functional designer or a high-end niche, the fragrances that I genuinely enjoy have become more and more specific and narrower with time. And it is always a delight when I find perfumes like these that give me total satisfaction. Either way, that has been my impressions of the house of Astia de Villats. Thanks for watching, take care and ciao.